Okay, I'm gonna start my stylized grass here and I'm gonna start off in Blender. And what I'm gonna do is press one on the numpad to enter this front orthographic view. And I'm gonna press Shift A and select image, reference, and load in my grass texture image. So I've got this piece of grass here and you can use anything you want. You can draw uh, some grass in your favorite paint software or a vector illustrator. Uh, or you could download a piece of clip art or anything you want. The starting image that you're going to use here is going to obviously change the character and the look of your finished grass. So what I need to do is make a plane that matches the size and shape of this image. So I'm going to add a mesh and select plane and I'm going to rotate that. I'm going to press R, X, 90 and I need to scale this up a little. I'm going to press S and drag to scale this up. Okay, now that I've got this plane the size of my image, uh, I need to duplicate this plane a few times to make a clump of this grass. So I'm going to go ahead and delete my reference image and I'll select this plane and press S to scale. I'm going to type in 0.1, make it quite a bit smaller and I'm going to press G, Z, and we're going to move this up to just above the horizon axis. And now I'll make uh, a few duplicates here. Just adjust my view, uh, Shift D to duplicate, and you can see I have this duplicate here, but I'm going to press Escape to leave it in position. Press R, Z, 90. And this is going to help with viewing the grass from different sides. If I use just one flat plane all facing the same way, when you go off to the side, you'll see the grass would disappear. So it's a 2D image, and we're trying to uh, represent this in a 3D world. So this helps to uh, be able to see this grass from any direction. And I could just be done here and uh, export this as my grass model but I'm going to duplicate this a few more times so that each model has a few more blades, individual blades of the grass. Okay, so I'm gonna press A to select all, Shift D to duplicate, X to slide this along the X axis. And I'm gonna put it fairly close here. The, uh, the grass blades don't quite go to the edge of these planes here, so I'm gonna overlap it a little bit. And I'm gonna press A to select all, Shift D to duplicate and Y to move this over here. Okay, so now I've got this clump of uh, grass. This is eight different copies of this plane and I'm going to just center this in the scene. I'm going to press A to select all and G, Y and G, X. Okay, and now I want to join these planes together. I'm going to right click and join. So now this is just a single object. And the last thing I want to do is set my origin for this object back to the very center here, right at the base, right on where the 3D cursor is located. So conveniently I can go object, set origin, origin to 3D cursor, and that's it. I'm all set. So I'm pretty much done here. There's one more change that I'm going to make. <clears throat> I'm going to go to UV editing and make sure I have all of my faces selected. And in the UV side here, I'm gonna press A to select all, and I'm just going to scale this down just a hair. And that's to avoid uh, any artifacts from the edge of the model and the edge of my uh, image here. Okay. So I'm done with that. I'm going to go to File, Export, and save this as an FBX file. I'm going to call this grass.fbx. Okay, so now I'm going to head into Unreal Engine. Okay, I've opened Unreal Engine, and I've just created a new blank project. I'm just going to delete a couple things here. We don't need this floor, this network start, sphere reflection capture. And I'll go to landscape mode. And I'm going to press create. I'll just leave these default values, create a landscape. And uh, maybe just sculpt a couple of hills here for good measure. 
All right. So now I'm going to import my grass uh, model. So I'm going to go back to select mode and right click, new folder, call it grass. And I'm going to drag from my desktop my grass model. And I'm just going to select uh, do not create materials. I'll make my own material. Perfect. So now I need to drag in my grass texture. And I'm going to right click on the texture and select create material. I'll call that grass underscore MAT. And I'm going to open that up. Okay, so I need to make a couple changes here. And I'm going to select the result node of the material here. I'm going to go to details and change the blend mode to masked. And I'm going to change the shading model to two-sided foliage. And I'll check two-sided. OK, so now I need to drag from the alpha channel for this texture to the opacity mask. And all right, I'm going to save and close. And I'm going to open my grass model and apply that material. All right, so that looks all right. Now, the next thing I'm going to do is add a bit of motion to this grass. It doesn't look really great when it's perfectly still. So what we need to do is, in the material, I'm going to right click on the material graph and type in simple grass wind. So this node here is going to drive the world position offset for this material. And we need a few inputs here. Intensity, weight, speed, these are all scalar parameters. So I'm going to just press 1 on the keyboard, hold 1 on the keyboard I should say, and left click with the mouse three times to make these constant nodes. And the final input here is a vector 3. So I'm going to hold 3 on the keyboard and click for a vector 3. And so I've already fiddled around with these numbers. And I know what I want to plug in here. Uh, but feel free to uh, try things out yourself and see what kind of effects you could come up with. For the wind intensity, I'm going to plug in 0.7. And for wind weight, I'm going to put in 0.2. And for wind speed, I'm going to also use 0.2. For the additional WPO, you can use uh, a mask to uh, only affect a certain portion of the uh, material uh, of the uh, model. But I'm actually just going to input here a single color uh, channel, a single channel vector 3. So I'm going to plug that in, and I'm going to change this to red. And now I'm going to plug the result here into the world position offset. OK, now we can actually see a little bit of wiggling happening here in the material preview. So that's great. I'm going to press Save. And we'll close that and open up our model. And we can see our waving motion there. It looks a little bit weird when you're looking at just a single model like this, but we're going to lay down a whole bunch of these uh, real close together, and uh, so it should look better in a large group. So let's do that. I'm going to go to Foliage Editing Mode, and I need to drag my grass mesh into the foliage bin. And I'm going to select that here and make a few changes. Uh, we're going to select the density and change that uh, really high. I want to put down something like uh, maybe 6,000 per kilometer. Um, then I'm going to change, uh, I'll leave the scale for now at 1. We can adjust that later after we see what it looks like. Um, I want to deselect cast shadow because we're going to put a lot of these down. And so we don't want it casting shadow. That will be a lot uh, easier on the GPU. And I'm going to override the light map resolution here by checking this box and put in a really low number like 4. All right, pretty happy with that. So I'm going to just paint some out here and see what it looks like. OK, let's take a closer look. All 
Okay, and so, so far this is looking all right, um, but it's actually pretty bland because it's all just a single color. And so I need to make a change here. And what I'm gonna do is go back to the material and where I plug in my base color, I'm going to uh, right click and type in color variation. And I'm gonna grab this speed tree color variation node. And uh, I'm gonna plug in my base color through this node and now I need to indicate an amount, amount of color variation. So that's a scalar parameter and I'm going to uh, just hold one on my keyboard, click and plug that in. And for a value, I'm going to select uh, something like 0 0.5. We'll apply that and I can take a look what happens here in the viewport. Okay. Let me close this and I'll go back to select mode and we'll take a, a bit of a look around here. I can see already uh, there's some blades of grass that are quite a bit lighter, a little bit into the bluer spectrum. Uh, there's, you know, more that are some that are yellowish, uh, you know, green, dark green. Okay, so this is looking not bad. Uh, it's introduced quite a bit of variation. And there's just one more thing I could do to improve this the look of this grass. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is open the material and I wanna feed a value into the uh, subsurface color. And that's gonna affect the color shift uh, when light passes through the surface. So I'm gonna use uh, the same color that's coming into our base color, but I wanna shift it a little bit. So I'm gonna drag from this result node and multiply and I'm gonna hold three and click and plug that into the B node for multiplication. And we'll multiply that color by, uh, when I say multiply by, we're going to basically add this shade to the underlying shade. So I'm just gonna add a kind of a light yellow. And I'm gonna plug the result here into subsurface color. And we'll apply that. Okay. So that's looking pretty good. We're getting a little bit of that subsurface color through the yellow. And it's pretty much, um, it's, it's uh, only affecting the grass when the light is passing through it. So in this case, the sun's up here, the light's passing through this grass and I'm seeing that subsurface color. Uh, you know, if I'm looking more this way, for example, I don't see that color because there's not light passing through it at this angle. And just to show you a bit better example of what that subsurface color is doing, I'm going to shift this from yellow into, let's say, a pink so we can really visualize what's happening. Okay, so now you can see where the subsurface color is coming through. And uh, if I turn away from the sunlight, you know, you're not getting that effect because we're not looking at this grass with light passing through it. We're looking at the face that the light is, is hitting. As Soon as I turn around, now we're seeing where the light's coming through this grass and we're getting that, that pink coming through. Okay. So that's pretty much it. This is the stylized grass and uh, you know, you can adjust all kinds of things from the initial texture to the color variation to the subsurface color, maybe the density, uh, you know, scaling, whatever you want. Um, this is a great starting point though. And so that's it for this video. Thanks for watching.